And all right, I'm back. Today, something a little different. We're doing some Westward whiskey out of Portland, Oregon. And this one here is the American Single Malt Oregon Stout Cask. And this is an interesting one. Straight malt whiskey finished in stout casks. So it says, a celebration of Oregon's legendary brewing culture made from scratch from Pacific Northwest barley fermented with ale yeast for outstanding flavor, double pot distilled for exceptional character, matured in new American oak barrels, and finished in Oregon stout cask. So finished in stout beer casks. And the ones that I heard it was aged in was actually from Fort George, which is in Astoria, Oregon, and they have a whiskey barrel aged Imperial Stout. So it's like this sort of inception of whiskey barrel aged stout and then they put the the whiskey in those stout casks and it's kind of like <laughs> this whole inception thing but it really has some great flavor so we're getting down to the nitty gritty here I really like this one <clears throat> and I was already drinking some a little bit earlier I was watching bbs.live if you do not know bbs.live on Instagram it's a wet shaving Instagram live show that they do bi-weekly. And they being Nate and Melly Mel. You can check out Melly Mel um, on the side at YouTube. Uh, Melly Mel Shaves. Definitely check them out. I'll, uh, I'll put out a spell it in the description below. Alright. Let us take a sip and get into this shave. So we got our Festival of the Dark Arts Glen Karen here. And this is actually a festival that's put on by Fort George Brewing in Astoria, Oregon. So, cheers. Really good. To me, it has a nice dessert-like quality to it. It does have a little bit of heat, a little bit of warmth, but I get some nice, like, chocolate character to it. It's, it has some nice sweetness, and I very much enjoy this one. I'm not a huge uh, whiskey connoisseur, so I don't I don't have all the the um, palate or information on that. But I'll just tell you I like it. All right, let's get into the shave. This one here is a collaboration between the Razor Company and McDuff's Soap Co. And this one is Cream Soda. Very nice labels, as per usual. Um, Side label here has McDuff Soap Company. There's a look at the side label, a lot in the same vein. We got some scent notes right there. And the soap base. This is a product of Canada. There's the ingredients. Um, I'm not exactly sure. This might be like V3, V4, I can't remember. Um, but scent notes. Raspberry, nectarine, pineapple, blackcurrant, vanilla, and musk. <clears throat> I'm assuming the vanilla turned it kind of this brownish color. Uh, it is a softer soap, and it's a very good one. It was real easy to lather. Got it right there. Didn't uh, didn't have to do anything special whatsoever to lather it. I just smeared it in the bottom, used a damp badger brush, and we got right to it. The uh, shave bowl here is the Thirsty Badger Shave Bowl, also a product of Canada. I absolutely love that bowl. And then the brush we're going with today is actually the uh, Smiles for Miles brush. And you can see the coin under the bottle opener. And this is my Fresh Hop brush. So those are actually real hops that we cast in resin. And it's actually in the shape of an IPA uh, beer glass. So very, very cool stuff. I'm very uh, happy that Smiley made this one for me. And on top we got the V69 uh, Soft Titty Knot. Badger not. All right, so let's. Uh, I was thinking, haven't uh, busted out the menth dealer in a while. This right here is just a bougie chill mill. It has menthol crystals in the chamber right there, and it has this pump action on top. And so let's get some crystallage going here from the chilla in the pilla, the menth dealer. Haven't had a nice menthol shave in a in about a week, so go ahead and put that to the side. 
we'll incorporate those crystals real quick and then we will get into this shave um, if you're interested in having a, a menth dealer of your own it's basically just a salt and pepper grinder but I put menthol crystals inside of it that way I can kind of add a little bit of chill factor to my shaves if you're interested in getting one of those um, I usually list the um, Amazon link in the description of the video as well it's not an affiliate link I don't make a fucking cent off of it so it's just there for your guys' convenience if you're interested all right let's wet the face let's get some lather on there and then let's get to shaving so let's talk a little bit about the scent on this one obviously it's inspired by the classic beverage cream soda but in all honesty I it doesn't bring to mind at least in my scent memory it doesn't bring to mind um, cream soda for me now it might for others but this one's a more fruity take and it doesn't you know sometimes when you're replicating um, carbonated beverages there's a bit of effervescence and just look at that uh, look at that lather that stuff <laughs> is dense and luxurious right there um, but yeah sometimes it'll have a bit of effervescence that kind of gives you the feeling of that carbonated beverage and for this one I'm not really getting that effervescence quite as much um, it, it's quite a it's quite a fruity mixture and from the scent notes that makes sense to me but just doesn't come across because to me cream soda has more of a like a vanilla nature to it and although this has vanilla in the scent notes I don't think the vanilla is like the prominent forefront scent note Sure, it's in there, lending a bit of sweetness to the mix, but it's just not the uh, it's just not the prominent scent note for me. And I'm just painting in a little bit of water because I can tell once I got it on the face, it was just a little bit thicker than I had planned on. No big deal there. Really easy to paint a little bit of water in. All right, that should do it. Now this is looking a little bit thinned out, so I can't find, <laughs> I think I put a little bit too much water. Can't seem to find a uh, happy medium. Okay, before we go too damn long into this video, we got the charcoal goods level two head right there. And uh, my lighting isn't necessarily working with me there, but there's a look at the charcoal goods level two head very nice uh, razor there and I don't, you gotta love it when your camera is focusing on everything except for what you want it to <laughs> but there's the razor even if it might have been uh, out of focus <clears throat> it's got a Wizomet blade in it that I've got probably five six shaves on blades tend to last a little bit longer for me since I'm not shaving the full face but I usually as soon as they show signs of degrading I'll just toss them because there's really no reason to push it past its limits blades are cheap one of the cheapest factors of our shave so there's really no reason to get stingy with them And I am a fan of McDuff's, um, another excellent Canadian artisan. Their soap base, I, I think it's a really good soap base. Lathers up quite easily. But, uh, you know, some people aren't fond of how soft it is. I definitely prefer 
So base is to be a little bit firmer than this. It's not a deal breaker for me whatsoever, but I've just found firmer soap bases to be a little bit better value. And whether or not I will ever take advantage of that value is kind of irrelevant because the fact remains that it's still a better value. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's just, I might, this might be my one and only shave with this soap, but that's irrelevant when I'm talking about the value of the product minus me. <clears throat> so something to consider um, on McDuff's front when they come to uh, reformulation time, if they ever plan on reformulating in the future, something to consider. Finding a way to keep it just as good, or maybe finding ways to make it better, while also making the soap base just a hair firmer. I really don't think it needs to be hard as a rock, but um, when it has a little bit more firmness than where it's at now, it just seems like you have to use less soap. And it might be like mind tricks, but it just seems that way. That's good stuff. All right. I think what I'm gonna do this time, go ahead and dunk the brush in the water, and then I'll <clears throat> incorporate that moisture in the shave bowl rather than trying to incorporate it on the face. Because sometimes, and in this case, on that first pass, I kinda overdid it on that one cheek, whereas <laughs> on the rest of the cheek, or on the other cheek and the neck, it was a little bit uh, more spot on to where I wanted it. Either way, it would have got the job done whether it was dry, hydrated, or indifferent. Shaving really not that hard, and <laughs> having a less than perfect lather really isn't gonna stop me from having a good shave, so. Not a deal breaker. I am getting a nice menthol chill here, and I will add that the menthol crystals didn't affect the scent in any way, shape, or form. I like to add that in because this is real menthol. It's organic, food-grade menthol, and real menthol has, is known to have a scent of its own, and that scent is off-putting to some people, and sometimes... It's a deal breaker when that scent interferes with a shave soap. But what I've found when I'm adding real menthol in this format to my shave soaps, and I've done it with many, many, many shave soaps, when I'm adding it in this format, I crush the crystals up myself. And then I load them into the bougie chill mill. I load them up into the menth dealer. And this lather is fucking insane. I just had to, I just had to comment on that. The lather is looking killer. Um, but I load them in myself after crushing them myself, and I sprinkle them in myself right on top of a already already made lather. It just doesn't seem to affect the scent whatsoever, and so that that's a a very pleasant and uh, unexpected side effect that I wasn't, I, I wasn't planning on this happening. I wasn't aware that this was gonna be the outcome, but I'm super happy that this is the case because although I don't mind the uh, natural scent of menthol, there are cases where I might love the fragrance of a soap so much that I don't want anything interfering with it. So I also understand uh, those points of views as well. But I haven't, I've used this many, many, many times. And I've never, never experienced 
the natural sentimental overtake the ascent of the soap or even really affect it in the slightest so it's not like it's not like the scent is barely there I mean I'm talking about it's unnoticeable so for me that's like having the best of both worlds having that menthol chill that us ment heads crave and not affecting the fragrance of the soap we're using whatsoever. Best of both worlds. And this is nice. Every time I have myself a nice menthol shave, it's like I'm just treating myself. I love it. And I don't know if you guys follow One Pass Ben on Instagram, also known as B Lou. Um. He, he did a meme today of uh, some guy with like a hundred jackets on, <clears throat> like winter coats. And he said, uh, <laughs> using mentholated shave gear in winter is, uh, is madness unless you're, unless you're DK damn fine shave. <laughs> and uh, I got a laugh out of that. The, the picture on the meme was pretty funny. The guy with all the coats on. And then, of course, he was spot on. It looks like, I felt like there was a, a blemish there, and I see a weeper. So, there must have been. No big deal, though. If that's the, if that's the only carnage we come across this shave, I'm still considering this one a good shave. Sometimes there ain't shit you can do about having blemishes or imperfections on the surface of your skin. Sometimes you can't shave around them, sometimes you have to shave over them. <laughs> All right, let's get this, let's get this lather off the face and we will get into a post shave. This was actually a gift from the razor company. If you, uh, if you don't follow the razor company on Instagram and YouTube, I definitely recommend it. Jason, the owner, is a great guy, an outstanding member of the community, and he actually is a member of the community. He isn't just a wet shaving retailer. He is actually a member of the community, and he demonstrates that every day. He, he gives away so much, he donates so much, um, he comments and is just aware of the happenings in the shave community. And uh, really can't say enough good things about the guy. And not to mention the business and customer service aspect is also top rate. I mean, quite literally the best retailer we have at our disposal at this moment. All right, Lancaster Red. This is one of the Black Sheep luxury towels. And uh, absolutely, <laughs> this is the best way to... Uh, wipe down or pat down the lather after a good shave. It does not get better than that. There is no hand towel that, <laughs> that is more luxurious than this. Let's take a crack at getting some of that lather out of the depths of the beard. We'll have to get we'll have to get the rest of that off camera. Okay, so we do not have a matching splash because this was a gift. So we're gonna finish this one off with the club, the shaving shop club, and this one is mimosa and melon. And this is the scent that was um, the tribute soap for the stallion. I forgot the name of it, but mimosa and melon was kind of like the rebranded name. Uh, excellent uh, industry standard restrictor right there and the uh, A&E shaving shop aftershave splash is one of the best on the market and it has it has been um, at this high level for such a long time it has that nice uh, skin food 
feel very nourishing like right away and uh, the scent strength on these aftershaves are bold and banging and they're to be enjoyed all right hell yeah okay put the residual on the forearms to complete the scent bubble and we will wrap this one up so thank you guys for watching i appreciate you hope you enjoyed the video and i'll catch you on the next one